And now it's going to be a sack. Chris Jones smokes Philip Rivers right back at the 40. He's not banking on his the skill that he's been blessed with. The end zone. Kelsey, great catch. Touchdown, Kansas City. Look at him go. in trouble. He is going to be pulled down and sacked. Justin Houston. Only the second division loss since the opening game of 2015 and the first home division loss since then. Chiefs lose it 29-28 in dramatic fashion. Three different times the Chiefs had 14 point leads in this game. We're going to talk to Mitch Morris especially about that later in the show. But just the inability to put these guys away and give Phillip Rivers credit. This game to me is kind of like a microcosm of the whole season. The Chargers just wouldn't go, haven't gone away. Yeah, as much as you want to look at what the Chiefs could have done differently, you have to give credit to the other side and what Phillip Rivers was able to do in a place that he hadn't had a lot of success. And he was able to do that without Melvin Gordon, without Austin Eckler, and without Keenan Allen. You look at it from our side, like he should go out and make plays. But at the same time, some of those throws he was making, he was making phenomenal plays. And you look at the Chiefs side of it, and uh, I know people are going to be upset about this loss because like you said, they've got the 14-point the, the uh, leads at a few different times. But the bottom line is Chiefs have three losses this year by a total of seven points against three very good football teams. So at the end of the day, there are things the Chiefs could have done. Sometimes in those, these other games, they've made those plays. They just didn't make them tonight. Yeah, and we're going to talk about it later in the show. But everything's still in play. The Chiefs would have the tiebreaker. If these two teams went out, they still win the division. Uh, but I want to ask you as well, uh, with some positives in this game, Damian Williams was yep. a stud in this game. Uh, Chris Jones, that's, we're going to talk with him later in the show. Uh, but then also some other positives. Eric Berry got out there in the first half, and I thought was the old Eric Berry just yeah. right out of the gate. Yeah, I think the red zone tackle that he made where he came up, there was no hesitation. He saw it, he trusted his eyes, and he came downhill, beat the block, came downhill quickly. It was great to see. I think one of the first snaps he was out there, he also came on, took off and took on an offensive lineman, showed some physicality, which is great for a guy who hadn't played football in a long time. But I think you hit the nail on the head with, with Damian Williams. It comes out, gets over 100 yards from the scrimmage, averages 7.7 .7 yards per touch, gets a couple of touchdowns, really steps up in that last drive, going seven, uh, 10 plays, um, it's taken over almost eight minutes off the clock. They were able to punch it in the end zone, showing some physical uh, ability in the run. And we're gonna, I know we're gonna talk to Chris Jones a little bit later too. He had eight quarterback hits today and yeah. set an NFL record uh, for consecutive 10 straight games with a sack. Uh, so there are positives to take away, but at the end of the day, you have gotta make a few more plays than the Chiefs made today and uh, give credit to the Chargers. Yeah, and you get up three times by 14, you need to put the hammer down. Chiefs lose it here, 29-28. Four seconds to go on a two-point conversion throw from Rivers to Mike Williams. Coach, what a heartbreaker. Yeah, that was a tough one, man. Um, two good football teams playing each other and too many penalties. I mean, that's that's what it comes down to. and you got to eliminate those. And, uh, you know, you're both sides of the ball. So we, we didn't do a very good job there. A lot of emotion in a game like that when you – you know, four seconds too long, basically. How do you settle the, or how do, what, what do you, how do you address the team after this, something like that? Yeah, so you're still in a position where you can take care of business, your own business. So we've got to do that. It's a tough one. And, uh, uh, but you got to be, you know, in this business, you got to be resilient. You got to learn from your mistakes. That's what's real. And uh, if we do that, we're a pretty good team. But you have all these penalties here, you, you know, it's a problem. You know, just the last few second that, seconds of that game aside, you got off to a really fast start. I want to talk about a couple of guys. Dame, the Williams twins, Damian Williams, over 100 yards combined, two TDs. Can you talk about his uh, – he just looked really strong and powerful today. Yeah, he did a nice job, um, real nice job. Caught the ball well, ran hard. Um, it's good to get him in there and get him a shot to play. We. We've kind of known that that's what he is. It's just a matter of having an opportunity. So. And the other Williams did a good job, too. So uh, probably could have used him a little more. I think Chris Jones may be having a Pro Bowl career high. I mean, it's just every week he seems to get a little bit better. Can you talk a little about Chris Jones? Yeah, he's maturing in front of us here. So he's doing a nice job in there, um, particularly with the pass game. And um, yeah, he's growing. And so that's a positive. I want to ask you just quickly, I know you didn't get much of a look at Eric Berry, but uh, what you see of Eric Berry back out on the field? Well, he got in there and got, got the first half in, and, um, you know, his numbers got up there a little bit. So, um, but I think we'll see tomorrow how he feels, but right now he feels okay. 
Well, I know it was a tough one for you. You get a couple extra days to recover here and then back on the road to Seattle and get get at them. That's right. Yeah, that's what you do. So uh, you got to have a little character right now. Okay, we mentioned, or I guess Andy Reid mentions, Damian Williams and Darrell Williams as well. Uh, but two guys who we have hardly seen this season, and I want to touch on them because it's a positive for the Chiefs in this game. Uh, where do you see them having success and moving on from Kareem Hunt and with an injured Spencer Ware? Uh, what's led to them putting up the yardage they did? Well, I think it's a great thing. In the NFL, any coach will tell you, you want to have superstars, you want to have obviously pro bowlers and all pro guys, but you want to have depth. And the fact that this running back core shows the depth, shows guys that are hungry, taking advantage of situations and opportunities, Oklahoma State, first-time guy, you have an LSU guy, both free agents, both hungry to make plays, and they're able to be coached up by Eric Bieniemy and Andy Reid to go out there and make those big plays. I think that's huge for this offense. It actually uh, offers an opportunity for guys to exhale, the offensive lineman to exhale, Patrick Mahomes obviously having confidence in these guys to go out there and make plays in this type of game, on center stage, national TV, and you have young guys making those type of plays. I think that's going to be huge for this team going forward. I'm going to give you a stat. This is from ESPN Stats, okay? Entering Thursday, teams were 0-88 this season when trailing by 14 or more points in the final five minutes. Phillip Rivers was 0 for 20, win or lose, in his career in those situations. My point is this feels, for some players I'm sure, pretty gut-wrenching. Yeah. But how do you turn things around? Two games left, a lot still in their control. Well, I think you have to have the mindset that this was, this was like a playoff game. You lost the playoff game, you have the 24-hour rule. I go back to my days with Marty Schottenheimer. It was a midnight rule. As of midnight, you had to forget about it and look forward to the next game. They have a task at hand. They recognize they still own uh, the situation where they stand right now. They still control their own destiny. They can go to Seattle and, and do work and come away with the victory and then come home on December 30th and play the hated Raiders for an opportunity to extend their season here at Arrowhead. That has to be utmost and at the forefront of their minds that they control their own destiny the, the Chargers have lost more AFC games than the Chiefs have at this time. They have two more AFC games while the Chiefs have one more AFC game. They are in total control of their destiny. They can't sulk right now, Tom. They have to move forward. And a guy who could play a big role in moving them forward, getting these last two wins, Chris Jones, he of the sacked streak, going to join us on Chiefs Rewind. Back to Rivers, being pressured, trying to get away. He's going to be tackled and sacked from behind at the 21, a loss of seven. Chris Jones, his 10th consecutive game with a sack. It ties an NFL record of Simon Fletcher of the Broncos in 1993. It was also done at Arrowhead Stadium as Jones would not relent. He came in from behind Rivers to take him down. Tough loss for the Chiefs here, losing right at the gun. Uh, but with this Chris Jones, I got to ask you, though, first of all, you tie an all-time NFL record with 10 straight games with a sack. What about the pressure you were able to get on Rivers early in the game? I mean, uh, it was very effective um, at the first half of the game. Um, but it's kind of slowed down in the second half. And um, I blame the defense. We got to pick it up second half, get off the field, fourth down, you know, get off the field and um, seal the win. Now you finished with eight quarterback hits. It's got to be some sort of a record. But I'm curious, just when uh, you guys went to locker room after the game, just what was Coach Reed's message to you guys after a loss like this? You know, uh, it's part of the game. It's part of the game. It's a tough loss. It's, uh, it can affect you mentally. We got a couple days off. Um, we got to prepare for Seattle. So, you know what I'm saying? Um, if we lost, uh, get over it. Let's focus on Seattle. Get better at things. Did they change anything up protection-wise on you guys in the second half, or was it pretty much what you were seeing in the first half? It was a little different, but, you know, that's not an excuse for um, we still got to get to the quarterback. We still got to make plays and get off the field. How big are these next few days going to be now that you have a little bit extra time before you have to go to Seattle and get, get things right? Uh, it, it's big. Mentally and physically, we can rest our bodies, um, get our minds right off of this tough loss, and um, get back into it. And echoing Chris Jones there, we spoke to Reggie Ragland in the locker room as well, and he kind of said 
there was the feeling the defense did not finish the game. Yeah. And so I'm sure those guys go into it uh, looking forward to next week. But a big part of this game in our pivotal moment, Dan, and I just break down one of the plays that played a role in this not going the Chiefs way. Well, there were several plays that went against the defense. Way too many penalties. But I'm going to go back to eight seconds left in the game. And you have a situation where Kendall Fuller gets a penalty that sets up this play. Yeah. Mike Williams. Sit, yeah, Mike Williams comes through with the big play, one-on-one -on, -one on the outside. He's a big receiver, gets away with a little bit of push-off. But prior to that play, Kendall Fuller getting that uh, penalty in the back of the end zone was a crucial play and to me was the pivotal part of this game. The defense, like Chris Jones spoke about, had to step up. To me, it's on their shoulders. Yeah, I mean, how tough is that for a defense that, by the way, has obviously taken some criticism this year but was playing very well to that point? Yeah. For it to suddenly kind of dip and have those two late touchdowns, how do you rebound for next week? Well, so, you know, I, I would go back to some of the things that my parents used to tell me. My <laughs> father said, some things that make you laugh will make you cry. During this season, this defense has been up and down. You go back to the three losses. This game, obviously, the defense didn't step through, but also you go back to the Patriots as well as the Rams game where there were multiple opportunities for the defense to step up and they didn't get the job done. Now, the offense is not looking on that side of the room and casting any kind of issues with the defense. They recognize that this is a team, but everybody on this team has their responsibilities. The defense did not come through. On a, in a situation where you can pretty much secure home field advantage and a one, no less than a two seed in the playoffs, the defense needed to step up and make those plays late. The fact that this Chargers team was down by 14 points in this game three times, and the, the Chiefs defense didn't step up in those situations. The Chiefs obviously in a lot of tight games this year, but it is worth noting their three losses by a total of seven points. We go inside the locker room next here on Chiefs Rewind. to the Chargers in heartbreaking fashion on a two-point conversion in the final minute of this game here at Arrowhead, and they miss out on a chance to clinch a third straight AFC West title, but it is far from over. Inside that locker room, no one is hanging their head because they know that this is an opportunity to learn from their mistakes. Adversity. When adversity hits, who are you going to be? Um, and, I mean, that's the message of football and life, really, adversity, who you're going to be whenever it happens to you. So, I mean, I think we have a great group of guys that's going to bounce back from this and just learn. We got to finish. Ain't no differences. We beat ourselves. That's how I feel like when it, I, don't, I, don't, I don't feel like the only thing that can stop us is us. And we beat ourselves and we didn't finish. Not really. I mean, I felt like uh, I probably could have came back last week, but it was still that um, hesitation, I guess. So I didn't feel it in my in my spirit. So I just said I'll wait till this week. Uh, I mean, it was amazing. You know, just that the energy. You know, you can't you can't make it up. You can't explain it. Um, his communication out there, um, just his confidence and swagger. I mean, I could go on, but I mean, what's understood don't got to be explained. Man, EB look great. EB look good. EB gonna be EB. He did what he had to do when he was in there. I don't know what happened, uh, why he went at the end, but um, but when he's in, you, you can see the difference, and when he's not, sometimes you can't, but mm, but I was happy for him. Communication, you know, but got to finish, you got to see it, so. But I'm, I'm, I'm around with my guys to the end, regardless. Uh, we started as a team, we're going to finish as a team, and I love this I love this team regardless of what happens, so I'm, I'm riding to the end with my guys in. Oh, absolutely. I mean, we 110% still are in control of our own destiny. And I think um, us knowing that and having that mindset um, is definitely a positive uh, outlook to have going into the next game. Pretty much just finished. Like I said, you, you we're a team. We're a team. So teams going to win and lose together. We've been winning the whole year. It's, it's, it's easy to win, but how are you going to be when you lose? And I, I feel like these guys are going to be ready to come back and bounce back next week. Okay, obviously a lot. Uh, I think to look forward to having Eric Berry back, but this was just the foundation of that. You wonder what's going to happen in the coming weeks. Let's uh, show you some numbers that obviously play a role in all sorts of games, but especially in this one. Uh, and one of the ones that sticks out to me here, Danon, would be the penalties for one, but the time of possession, the Chargers had not just some successful drives late, but some real back-breaking breaking long drives. Yeah, I thought the second quarter and even into the third quarter, the, the Chargers did an outstanding job of keeping the ball out of the 
hands of Patrick Mahomes. You see the numbers there, 33 minutes and 16 seconds of the game. They kept the ball on their side. The Chiefs, on the other hand, to me, double-digit penalties. They've had that all throughout the season, pretty much averaging 10-plus penalties per game. They have to play cleaner, especially when you're playing against the quality opponents like the Los Angeles Chargers. They got a couple from Mitchell Schwartz, who we know does not get flagged very often. It's just an uncharacteristic game in some regards there. I'll also point out 407 to 294. That is the yardage difference in this game. Yeah. The rush yards weren't quite there. The running backs were good, just in a different way. But, but do you still think that Sammy Watkins is missed as far as what they can do when he's out there? Yeah, I think the X factor is Sammy Watkins missing from this offense. I think they can do things, obviously, in a special way. But the fact, if you thought coming into this game that this Chiefs offense would produce 294 yards against the Chargers defense, I give credit to the Chargers defense. They are probably the most complete team, offense, defense, special teams in the NFL. But I wouldn't have thought that Patrick Mahomes would be relegated to 294 for this offense. A key factor is Sammy Watkins. You miss the yards after catch. You miss the opportunity or the factor that he can be on opposite sides of the field of Tyreek Hill and make those big plays and, more importantly, make the defense respect each side of the field to open up for those big plays. Right now, all the focus is going towards Tyreek Hill, yep. and they're opening the door for Travis Kelsey to make those plays, but there's not that other third factor of this offense that's really imposing upon opposing defenses. Well, let's get an offensive perspective. Center Mitch Morse, obviously well-spoken. When we talk to him, he's coming up next on Chiefs Rewind. They got a screen set up. Left side, Daryl Williams, 10-5, touchdown! Kansas City! It's Daryl Williams, his first National Football League touchdown. And the Chiefs are screening the Chargers to death here. What you have to ask, you got up to a fast start. Three different times you had 14-point leads in this game. Yeah. Uh, your thoughts about that? Um, you know, uh, for us, it's just executing, you know, in the third and fourth quarter. Uh, you, you can't give a guy like Phillip Rivers uh, that much time. And, you know, put our, we put our defense in a pretty tough situation, that, especially that last drive. You know, it's for us as an offense, it's our job to execute a you know, four-minute drill. Um, and we weren't able to do that. So, uh, you know, it's a really tough one. Um, but, you know, there's no panic. It's tough. You know what I mean? It's very tough. But uh, for us, it's, we still have two games left, and uh, we still have two opportunities to become a better team. And, uh, really hit our stride. Mitch, I want to ask about one of those drives that we know that you guys did execute and play well in the Darrell Williams touchdown. I just want you to walk us through your block on that play and what you're asked to do and, and get out there in space because I think a lot of people didn't know that the play's not going to happen if you're not out there and making that block. Oh, I mean, you know, first of all, I think, you know, the two guys who, you know, um, two running backs who went in there today played a heck of a game. And uh, kudos to them for making our jobs a lot easier. And, uh, you know, for us, it's our job to give them some more opportunities. They were really playing their, you know, their butts off. So, um, you know, it's just we were at the right place at the right time. Uh, and those guys made the magic happen. And we were just able to be in the right place. I have to ask you, it looked like they used more of a blitz scheme in the second half on you. How much was that different than what you saw in the first half? Um, you know, we, we you know, the last few weeks, I feel like we've been blitzed a lot. Uh, it's definitely something we get to look at. Um, you know, anything to slow us down. And, uh, you know, it's the tale of two halves, a really tale of three quarters and one quarter. So, um, you know, it's our job to whatever they throw at us to communicate. And uh, we weren't able to execute at the highest level we were able to. And, uh, you know, it showed at the end of the day. Ever since you're little, you hear that it's not about what happens to you, it's about how you respond to it. Just what gives you confidence that this group can respond in a way that has you go out there and find some success against Seattle? Yeah, I mean, I think we, we have no choice, you know what I mean? Uh, the, the leaders we have in this locker room and uh, just the vibe in the locker room was very, uh, you know, it's very disappointing, um, frustrating, but, you know, hope is not lost by any means. Uh, our, our fate is still in our control, and uh, for us, it's just going out there and figuring out, I know this is cliche, but we got to figure out what we can get better at and then uh, correlate that to the field in the next few games. But when the smoke clears on this game, it's still right there for you. I mean, if the Chiefs went out, Chargers went out, you still win the tiebreaker. I mean, how much of that is going to be part of this recovery to go, hey, it's still there? Yeah, it's definitely still there. You know, it would have been easier if we won, but, um, you know, this, this game isn't easy. It's in this league isn't easy. Uh, wins in this league are so hard. 
Um, and that's no excuse by any means, but uh, for us it's just the little details. And I think when we watch the film, it'll show the little de details were the thing that kind of uh, got us in trouble. Well, they will watch the film, find out the details, but we will watch for Danon's chief observations. Observations. <laughs> Say it right, Tom. I know you will detail these right. You start off with committing to the run. Yeah, I thought the Chiefs, obviously the, the weight of this game and the weight of this team always falls on the shoulders of the quarterback. But 60 yards rushing in this game, to me, there needs to be a better commitment to the run game. They're shuffling guys in. Spencer Ware is down. They bring in the Williams duo. They've done an outstanding job, but I thought they could have done a better job of committing to the run game, especially against a team like the Chargers. And though active, no sign of Charkandrick West. I wonder if we'll see more of him next week. Uh, clean football needed, penalties a problem again. Well, this is an issue that has been hampering this team all season long. They have four penalties in the fourth quarter, opening up the door for extended drives by the Chargers and thwarted drives by the, the, the home team, obviously the Chiefs. They have to do a better job of playing clean. Double digit penalties by the end of the day, 10 penalties, you can't have winning football when you continue to have those kind of setbacks during the game. And I will say it as an outside observer myself, questionable, but you know what? Phillip Rivers may have taken a helmet as well, this is what happens in the NFL. Uh, the Chiefs still in control of their own destiny. This is the mindset, right? Yeah, it has to be the mindset. And if I'm Andy Reid, I'm speaking to the team in regards to, hey, we still control our own destiny. If the season ended right now, the Chiefs would be in a situation where they would be the number one seed, having home field advantage throughout the playoffs. They have an NFC opponent and an AFC opponent in the Raiders to end the season on this same home turf, while the Chargers, who are right nipping at their heels have two AFC opponents, a very desperate Ravens team going into Los Angeles next week. They have to be able to capitalize on that situation to keep their standing right now. The Chiefs hold everything in their hands. And for a stat nerd like me, at least this means that we'll get to see Patrick Mahomes put up some big numbers these last two weeks. Yeah. I'm excited to see that just personally. And we're going to hear from him coming up next from the podium, he and Coach Reed here on Chiefs Rewind. I, our fans were phenomenal. Uh, Great support, loud. Um, they stayed that way for all four quarters, um, and that's where a little bit, of, you know, some of our disappointments right there. I mean, they they came out and did a heck of a job for us. So what do we do? We get back on it, and uh, you know, in the National Football League, you got to be a bit resilient. And that's uh, what you do. You learn from your mistakes. That's real, and then you get yourself. Uh, you know, become a better team and, and uh, get yourself ready to go play Seattle. So that's that's what we'll do. Uh, not necessarily. I mean, I mean, they have a good defense. And uh, when you don't execute and you get penalties and stuff like that, that stalls out drives. And so uh, we we got some we got some scores, but whenever we needed to move the ball at the end, we, we didn't execute. And so uh, it's, um, it sucks now, but we're going to kind of recuperate and uh, come back and try to win these next two games. Yeah, so listen, I, I think if you if you narrowed it down to the penalties, both sides of the ball, I mean, we were in, in great position to get off the field. We didn't. Uh, and a lot of those extended play, uh, drives were off of penalties. So right or wrong, you know, they, 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 they're done. And, uh, and so we've got to do better. We're, we're not making excuses. We've got to do a better job. Yeah, I mean... Uh, I mean, there's not there's not much you have to say. I mean, everybody feels that that feeling. I mean, they they want to get back out there tomorrow. So we have a long, we're gonna have a long ten days. We're going to Seattle, which I mean, it's a tough place to play. Uh, they're playing really good football right now, uh, and so we're gonna just recuperate, see what we did well, and see what we didn't do so well, and and find ways to use this as as fuel as to go out there and win these next two games, and then uh, get into the playoffs. Yeah, you, well, as long as we learn from it, that's uh, that's the important thing right now. So uh, you get in and you, you know you don't take anything for granted at home or anything else. You you got to bear down, and and that's a good football team. So we, we've got to you know, the best thing we can do is learn from it and make ourselves a better football team. 
Early in the show, we talked about Damian Williams being a plus, also, and Eric Berry being back on the field, but it was good to see Kelvin Benjamin. That kind of got exciting to see he, how he can help. And then Darrell Williams. We saw it in training camp. This guy's going to be a weapon here going down the stretch. Yeah, you knew coming out of LSU, you knew he could catch the ball out of the backfield. We saw that. We talked with Mitch Morris about that play uh, where he got out. And really, Mitch not taking credit for his block, but getting out there and making it happen. But uh, Darrell Williams, a guy, like you, like you said, uh, going back to rookie minicamp, you know, he's one of the top undrafted guys uh, that uh, was available and he chose the Chiefs, which was interesting at the time because the Chiefs had so much uh, depth at the running back position at that time. But... Um, but yeah, that was obviously a positive you want to see with uh, Spencer Ware going down, not able to give it a go, to see uh, Damian Williams do what he did, and then Darrell Williams get a shot. That was great to see. Yep, so here we go. Everything's in play. Now, when the smoke clears on this and the disappointment clears out, you got to recalibrate, refocus. That's kind of been the theme of the show here. You went out, Chargers went out, you still win the division. And and uh, so now you got to set your sights on Seattle. They're 16 and two in prime time under Pete Carroll. You're going to play a Sunday night football game, but now you got to go up there and win it. Yeah, no teams that done have ever done anything special haven't had moments like this during the season. And again, it's not about what happens to you; it's about how you respond to it. And that's the good reason is you have a guy like Andy Reid that has been through the, uh, these battles before, knows how to get his guys ready. I asked the players in the locker room what his message was to them. He's already talking about Seattle. He's already talking about the fact that everything that they want to accomplish is still right in front of them, and it's just a matter of getting back to the process, which on the short week was a little bit different this week um, with the Thursday night game, but they're going to have a couple extra days to get their bodies ready and then go to and face a very good Seahawks team in prime time. Uh, so they're going to have a, another opportunity to beat a very good football team in a game that really matters. 29-28, the Chargers win it with a two-point conversion, a touchdown at four seconds to go in the game. Now it's on to Seattle and try to win this division. Let's wrap things up here on Chiefs Rewind. Looking ahead to the Seattle Seahawks. They may not be the Legion of Boom. Still a real good team, a playoff caliber team for sure. And uh, the biggest advantage here perhaps, Dana, 10-day rest for the Chiefs. Eric Berry said that played a role in him playing in this game. What can that do as a player and as a coaching staff? Well, it's huge, especially at this juncture of the season, to be able to have that extended rest, especially in a situation where you're trying to gain some momentum, obviously come away with victories moving into towards the playoffs. The Seahawks have a lot on, on the line as well. They have a lot of incentive in winning on their home turf, but the Chiefs want to bounce back from this loss right now in order to, to get in a situation where they can secure that number one seed, no lower than the number two seed, they have to win out. Seahawks can really run the ball, the league leaders in rushing, Dane, and so how much of a concern is that and what do you think the key to this one might be? Well, it's huge. I think this is a reality check. You come away from this game against the Los Angeles Chargers, you recognize the holes in this defense. It becomes real if you're a defensive guy on this team. The best way you can capitalize on learning experience in this game is being able to transfer that to the next game. Going into Seattle, making concerted effort to make those big plays, to nullify the effectiveness of a Russell Wilson, of a Tyler Lockett, and that devastating run game that the Seahawks present. It's always more fun doing this show when the Chiefs win. So let's see what happens next week. Chiefs, Seahawks, obviously a big one. But we thank you for watching this time around. Dan and Hughes, Tom Martin, and for everybody here at our 65 Toss Power Trap Studios, we appreciate it. We'll see you next time. Chiefs Rewind is brought to you by Ford, the official car and truck of the Kansas City Chiefs. And by Community America Credit Union, the official banking partner of the Kansas City Chiefs.